The amount of solute and solvent that we have in a solution can vary. And because of this, we need a way to describe how much of each of the components is present. So we can use things like dilute and concentrated, but these are only qualitative descriptions. They don't tell us the amount of the solute that is present. It just tells us a relative amount. Either it's not very concentrated and dilute, or it's very concentrated, and then we call it concentrated. In order to determine a concentration, this is a quantitative way of describing our solution. It tells us the amount of solute in a given amount of solution, and sometimes it does include the amount of solvent as well. So there's lots of different ways to record concentration. So we can use things like molarity, which we have already seen. So molarity is moles over liters. So the amount of solute is present in moles, and the volume of the solution is in liters, and this is the solution. We can use something called molality. Molality, shown with a little m, and molality is moles of the solute divided by the kilograms, but in this case, it is kilograms of solvent. So not just the solution, the mixture overall, but actually just the solvent. Mole fraction tells us the amount in, of the solute in moles and the amount of the solute and solvent in moles. And because of this, there are no units for mole fraction. It's represented by the Greek letter chi. Mole percent gives us the amount of solute in moles over the total amount of solute and solvent in moles. And then we multiply by 100 to get into a percentage. And the, the units that we have are percent. Then we get into parts. So we can do parts by mass. We can do percent by mass. We can do parts per million. We can do parts by, by per billion. So these are frequently um, abbreviated. Parts per million is PPM. Parts per billion are PPB. And so in these cases, when we're looking at mass, we we'll take the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution. So now again, we're back to solution. And then the only difference between these is the multiplication factor. So if we're doing percent by mass, our multiplication factor is 100. If it's parts per million, 10 to the 6, which is a million. And if it's parts per billion, it's 10 to the 9, which is a billion. We can also do parts by, per, parts by volume. So the, the previous one was parts by mass. We can do parts by volume. And then we're comparing the volume of the solute to the volume of the solution. And we can use those same multiplication factors. So when we look at making a solution, this is an important skill to have. We need to know the amount of the solution and the concentration of the solution that you're trying to make. From this, we can calculate the mass of the solute that you need to add. So you start with the amount of the solution. You can use those concentrations as conversion factors in order to figure out the, the amount of grams of solute that you need to, to weigh out. And so when we describe this, then we say we dissolve so many grams of solute in enough solvent to make a total amount of solution. So if we were making a one molar sodium chloride solution, we would calculate the amount of grams that are in one mole, which is 58.44, mass of sodium plus the mass of chlorine. We add that into a special type of volumetric container. This is called a volumetric flask. Volumetric flask allows us to measure one volume very, very accurately. And there's a line on the neck of the container that we fill it to 
And at that point, it is exactly one liter in this case because it's a one liter flask. We do need to add the solid first and a small amount of our solvent in order to get it to dissolve because the dissolving process actually increases the volume just a little bit. And so we want to make sure it's all completely dissolved before we bring the uh, solution volume up to the line on the neck of the volumetric flask. So let's look at the solution concentration. So one of these is the molarity. So moles of solute in one liter of solution. So it describes the amount of solute in moles. And then we talk about liters of the solution overall. We represent this as a capital M. And that capital M stands for moles over liters. A new type of concentration that you may not be as familiar with is molality. So for molality, we use moles of solute. But now we're dividing by kilograms of just the solvent. And the reason for this is because this concentration, so molality, represented by a little m, does not vary with temperature. So because it's based on masses of solvent, not volumes, as their temperature changes, we don't have to worry about the expansion and contraction uh, with our temperature. And so it is not temperature dependent. We will see this concentration used when we look at freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. If we are recording our concentration in parts, we can use this either as parts measured by mass or parts measured by volume. When we, when we do use parts, Generally, it's the same unit in both the numerator and the denominator. So if we're doing parts by mass, we'd use units like grams and kilograms. If we're doing parts by volume, then we're going to use volume units like milliliters and liters. If we're measuring in parts and it is a percentage, that means that a 0.9% by mass there are 0.9 grams of our solute for every 100 grams of the solution. Or if it's a larger measurement, we could use kilograms instead. If we're talking parts per million, that means that if we have 36 parts per million, and we're talking by volume, we have 36 milliliters of our solute per 100 or sorry, per 1 million milliliters of the solution. So the unit is given in the name. When we're talking about parts per million, so parts per million for a weight is the grams of solute per hundred or per million grams of solution. Sometimes you'll be see it represented as milligrams per liter. And the reason that we can do this is because the density of water is one gram per milliliter. And so that means that a kilogram of water is equal to a liter of water. So for aqueous solutions, sometimes you'll see it represented as milligrams of solute per liter of solute. This only works for aqueous solutions, though. Parts per billion, same idea. It's the part of the solute over the whole solution, and again, same unit. But then we're multiplying by a billion, so 10 to the ninth. Let's figure out what volume of soft drink contains 78.5 grams of sucrose if it's a 10.5% sucrose by mass solution. So we're going to start with these 78.5 grams of sucrose.
The 10.5% sucrose by mass means that we have 10.5 grams of sucrose for every 100 grams of our solution. And you'll frequently see me abbreviate solution as S-O-L-N, just so that you're aware. So that's uh, abbreviation that gets that I use frequently. We know because we're trying to find the volume in milliliters, and we are given the density, so 1.04 grams of our solution in one liter or one milliliter. Sorry, one milliliter. And so we can see that there's 719 milliliters of our soda contains our 78.5 grams of sucrose. If you can determine what mass of sucrose is contained in a 355 milliliters, so a can of soft drink, that's 11.5% sucrose. Pause the video and determine your answer. 355 milliliters, again, which is a can of soda. We have our density to help us convert to grams of our solution. So this would be grams of solution. And then we know that 100 grams of solution contains 11.5 grams of sucrose. And so 42.5 grams of sucrose is in a can of Soda that's 11 and a half percent. Mole fraction, which is represented by the Greek letter chi, is the fraction of moles of one component in the mixture versus the total moles of all of the components in the solution. So if we add all of the components up, our mole fraction will equal one. So if it's a simple solution of just solute and solvent, the mole fraction of the solute and the mole fraction of the solvent will equal one. And it's unitless because it's moles divided by moles. If we want to think of it as a percentage, we can simply multiply that mole fraction by 100, per, by 100 to turn it into a percentage. Let's look at an example where we have a solution that's prepared by dissolving 17.2 grams of ethylene glycol, so this is antifreeze, in 0.5 kilograms of water. We're given the final volume of 515 milliliters. We are going to need to calculate the moles of ethylene glycol for some of the concentrations. So we're gonna start by taking our 17.2 grams I'm going to use the molar mass in order to calculate our the number of moles. So 62.07 grams of ethylene glycol in one mole. And so we end up with 0 0.277 one moles. Okay, so to calculate molarity, molarity is moles over liters of solution. So in order to calculate moles over liters, we're going to take the moles that we just found of our solute and divide by the liters of the solution. So 515 milliliters, we divide by 1,000, 
to get liters and we have 5.15 liters. And so our molarity is 0.538 molar ethylene glycol. Now if we want to calculate molality, molality is equal to the amount of the solute in moles divided by kilograms of solvent. So if we want to find our molality, that is equal to the moles that we found divided by the kilograms of water. And so our molality, 0 0.554 molal. Okay. So notice these numbers are not quite the same because we're using different quantities in the denominator. If we want to find the percent by mass, our percent by mass is the mass of solute. So we normally abbreviate this mass percent. And it's the mass of the solute. In this case, our ethylene glycol divided by the mass of the solution. So in this case, we are going to have the solute is 17.2 grams, and our solution is going to be 17.2 grams, which is the solute, plus, if we change our water, the kilograms into grams, we multiply by 1,000, and that is 500 grams of water. And we do multiply by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So our mass percent is going to be 3.33% ethylene glycol. Our mole fraction, we have to do a calculation to find the number of moles of water. And so in order to do that, we're going to take our 500 grams of water. We know the molar mass is 18.02 grams in one mole. And so we find that there are 27.75 moles of water. Now, in order to calculate our mole fraction, and we're going to find it for the solute, so our ethylene glycol. We're going to take the moles of ethylene glycol and divide by the moles of the, the whole, so the solute, the ethylene glycol, and the solvent, which is our water. And so our mole fraction ends up being 9.89 times 10 to the minus third. Again, no units for this because it is a mole fraction. If we want to find mole percent, Then we take that mole fraction times 100 in order to change it into a percentage. So 9.89 times 10 to the negative third times 100. And so our mole percent is 0 0.989%. Here's a practice for you. Pause the video and find each concentration. 
So to find molarity, we're going to have to calculate the moles of our sucrose. So we need to find the molar mass, which is 342.30 grams in one mole. And that gives us 0 0.1472 moles of sucrose. So if we want to find our molarity, our molarity is equal to our moles divided by liters, so milliliters we'd have to divide by a thousand of the solution and we end up with a molarity of 0 0.415 molar sucrose in your soda. So this is a 12 ounce can of soda. If we want to find molality, molality is going to be the moles of sucrose divided by the kilograms of the solvent. So three, three, two kilograms. And so our molality is equal to 0 0.443 molal. Mass percent, again, we take the mass of the solute. So the mass of our solute is 50.4 grams and we divide by the mass of the solution. 50.4 grams plus our 332 grams. So kilograms to grams you multiply by a thousand. Multiply that by 100% to turn it into a percentage, and we get 13.2% sucrose. Mole fraction, we're going to have to find the moles of the solvent. So we're going to take the mass of our solvent, use the molar mass of water, because our solvent is water. That gives us 18.42 moles of water. And then we can find our mole fraction, which is the moles of the sucrose divided by total moles. So the sucrose plus the water. And our mole fraction is equal to 7.93 times 10 to the negative third. If we wanna find mole percent, It's equal to our mole fraction times 100 to turn it into a percentage. And so we end up with 0.793%. You'll notice we get very different numbers depending on the concentration that we're measuring, but it all depends what you're trying to do with these concentrations as to which is the proper one to use.